Hi, Tom with Heritage Electrical. You join us here on a Sunday morning where we're coming back to a, an emergency call out uh, that Paul attended last week. Uh, we need to get this guy's power back on because he's had no power for the last week. We've got our obligatory large speaker for some nice, relaxed Sunday morning music. <laughs> Play it at a reasonable level because it's a residential area, but it's a necessary, necessary evil this morning. Okay, so we're returning. Um, to an emergency call out that we had uh, last week that Paul attended where um, there was clearly water and condensation inside the consumer unit um, so we'll have a look at that in a minute but the inside of it's all rusty the cables are all corroded inside um, so just above where we are here um, there's, there's like a raised set of stairs entry to the front door and um, yeah, it's clearly that clear the water's getting in uh, through some of the pointing up there, um, and as well as sort of running down the internal wall just around this corner. It's also coming down into the main box here, so there's <coughs> condensation on the side of the isolator. Um, you can see the, the screw that was holding the earth block together, that's all rusted up. So there's just a lot of lot of moisture going on in there. So we're going to try and reroute the tails because the tails are also um, a source of where moisture was getting into the board. We're going to move the consumer unit from problem area onto this wall in the garage. So we're going to have to join some cables in a waterproof box. Just make sure that no moisture can get into that box. And then extend the cables into the new consumer unit position. It's going to be, going to be here on the garage wall. So that's the new position there yeah. on this dry internal wall. Yeah, let's have a look. Emergency call out. So RCD's tripping. So disconnected all the lives at the top and I've noticed that to just to double check that there's no faults on the circuit but we've noticed that there's rust on all the tops of these breakers some of these cables are rusty and corroded so there's water getting into the board you can see they're all rusted, the tops of the MCBs. So it looks like they are, so I'm going to do some tests on it if it will stay on long enough uh, to do some RCD tests on it. But it looks like water's getting in through the cavity at the back. So we've got some drips of water on these cables inside. So and there's damp on the wall there below it. So it looks like water's tracked down the tails and into the top of the RCD and it's now faulty because it's been loaded with water. So there's water gathering at the bottom of the door. Potential water getting getting in here. Down into the, into the cavity, or down this trunking to the board as well. So tracking down the twin and earths inside the trunking to the top of the board. And then also it's tracking in down the tails as well. So this is built on, you have to go up the stairs to go to the next story. We've got the electric meter on the outside and then them cables go through the back of the wall into the house, into the back of the board. And if there's water coming down uh, into these flags, it looks like there's a pool of water at the bottom of this void so if water's come down this point in that's the point is knackered straight down onto the tails tracking through the wall into the consumer unit so you've got two points of water coming in the door threshold and then this step that's built so water tracking down that trunking into the board where you've got the top of the Neutral bar's rusty. See some rust on the neutral bar there. 
so that is higher than the level of the tails coming in so some water must be tracking down from the inside of the door casing and some coming through the back straight down into the RCD yeah, you can see a lot of moisture inside all those screw terminals have been there for quite a long time they're all rusted up and as you saw before like the RCD unit literally wouldn't re-energize it was just tripping out so there's obviously moisture in that all the cables well, you can see them there but there's an example all the connections are all corroded so we're gonna have to strip those back and obviously in the process of sticking a new board in we're gonna test all the cabling as well make sure it's up to scratch and that may or may not reveal more remedial work that needs to be needs to be done you see there my moisture's coming in the top left there's all that salt coming through isn't there mm, yeah. and then you've got that patch all these patches here yeah all these damp patches here all so the, it's all tracking down all these cables have dried off a, a little bit now but yeah. um as i was trying to mark them with the marker pen it's, just trying to draw on wet cables and it wasn't having it so yeah what we need to do is is try and just put those cables into a waterproof box where there's a bit of a drip loop on them like that so that if any moisture does track down those cables um, you know it's just on the outer sheath and it's not going to make its way into the box well I won't have this problem again so I'm going to do something like that mount an adaptable box up there and this is a temporary measure until he gets his damp problem sorted out yeah. so we can get his power back on with no risk of water getting into the new board that we put in while he then gets wherever the damp problem sorted is coming in get it so well he gets it sorted otherwise if we put it straight back there it's just going to happen again isn't it yeah and as you can see, he's had no power for it because the rcd is also the main switch in this case so as soon as that doesn't want to re-energize that means that all of the the individual circuits there's no power going to them so we're gonna install uh, an rcbo board which has got a double pole main switch but then every individual circuit um, has got rcd protection built into it so rather than one rcd covering the whole uh, installation each individual circuit will be rcd protected so if one circuit has a fault it doesn't then render the entire installation without power so as you can see, because we're, you know, fully paid up members of the Hager fan club, we're using Hager gear again today. Um, that's just an example of one of the miniature RCBOs. So most of the manufacturers um, produce, uh, they do an RCBO unit obviously, but it's quite a bit taller, which doesn't give you as much room to make your connections in the consumer unit. Whereas these just nice and neat. You've got the lead to the neutral bar, but there's no flying air fleet as well um, with this being a Sunday and none of our wholesalers are open um, another reason that we're using Hager uh, in this occasion is, is we know that it's going to be bulletproof when we're installing it in one of our other videos um, we trialled using it wasn't a budget board but it was a more affordable um, RCBO board um, just to see what it was like in comparison to the gear that we like to fit uh, and it was good, but unfortunately, as you see in the other video, um, we had to return one of the consumer units because um, the knockouts um, were quite strongly welded to the board. Um, and usually, like as with the Hager stuff, just a quick tap with a hammer and the knockouts come out. Whereas this board, as we were knocking one of the knockouts out, one of the welds actually broke. So I had to take the board back and exchange it. Um, no. we, we can't risk that this happening on a Sunday because we need to get this work done now so that's why we've gone for, for Hager uh, in this occasion on this occasion right so just to give you a bit of a comparison um, here's the Hager domestic miniature that we're going to be fitting you can see as I said before we've just got the neutral lead um, this is a, a Hager commercial or industrial uh, full-size uh, RCBO um, once they get above a certain rating, so you see this is a B40. Uh, in fact, I think they do a 40 in a minute. They do, now, yeah, but, it's just these are uh, industrial yeah. and they're domestic. Yeah, so you can see there, you've got the air fleet as well on that one. Um, and this is a slightly more budget uh, RCBO. So, just put that down. 
So that's the size difference and you can see you've got an extra earth lead there to terminate. So once they're in the board, that's all you see. Um, so you might think what's the you know what's what's the point, what's the difference? Um, keeping the board nice and neat and making it easy for the installer actually might save you a bit of money in the long run because it means that it's quicker for us to do our job and get the board installed. So the money that you save in buying something like that you're probably going to be spending on extra time for the install anyway uh, and it's an inferior product whereas we know that these are bulletproof manufactured in the UK T yeah manufactured, Telford manufactured in Telford I think um, T Telford well I mean, manufactured yeah. in the UK anyway France that one yeah. um, where is that one it, you know let's see if we can find China. It's most probably built Chintz, in China. China, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the other thing to note about these, um, this is what we call type AC RCD. So this only detects uh, imbalances in current when it's um, AC fault. Whereas, as standard, the Hager is a type A RCD. Um, so it'll detect earth faults with AC current and also I think it's pulsed DC current so a lot of the electronics in your house whether it be tellies, computers, um, anything with a you know digital control gear in um, will be booting out a certain amount of DC current um, and on the older type AC RCDs they're not sensitive to those and in fact they can become saturated with uh, DC current and so they won't they won't trip even if there's an AC fault whereas the type A RCD units um, you know they, they take that into account and so as standard we fit uh, these type A RCDs now I would recommend that you know if you're having a board change that's something that you uh, definitely consider or ask your installer about Yeah. So you've also got that profile as well. It's a bit, a bit chunkier at the top there. Mm. So here you can see a few pictures uh, from the board change. What we we're actually able to do because there was enough length on the cables is rather than joint them in an adaptable box on the damp wall, we were able to pull them through above the ceiling where the board was originally located uh, and, and through into uh, the, the new position. Um, and we've just jointed them as required in some trunking which we've run down to the top of the board and actually in some cases the cables were long enough to make the way into the board and be re-terminated without needing to be jointed. Perhaps a little bit surprisingly we found that all the cables, uh, all the insulation resistance readings and the R1, R2 readings have come back pretty much satisfactory with just a few small remedials required so we'll be popping back to this customer's property to carry those out when it's convenient for him but yeah no uh, no c2s c1s or further investigations which is good news for him <laughs>